What would happen if NATO troops were sent to Ukraine? A compelling question, isn't it? This is the thought-provoking query that French President Macron recently put forth. In a bold move, Macron proposed that Western troops might join forces with the Ukrainian military to counter Russia's ongoing invasion. Macron's proposition, audacious in its nature, caught the world's attention, but it also led to a flurry of skepticism and clarification from NATO leaders. The idea of deploying combat troops in Ukraine, they stated unequivocally, was not part of their strategy. Such a proposal, while dramatic, raises numerous questions. How would it change the dynamics of the conflict? What would be the implications for the broader geopolitical landscape? And most importantly, would it lead to a resolution of the crisis, or merely escalate tensions further? These are the queries that have been circling in the minds of leaders, analysts, and citizens alike. Despite the skepticism, the proposal has not been entirely dismissed. It was, in fact, warmly received in Kiev, where the hope of stronger military support from the West is a beacon of hope in these dark times, yet the proposal's reception in Kiev was more nuanced than a simple endorsement. The Ukrainian leadership saw the proposition not as a concrete military strategy, but as a powerful signal to the Kremlin. A signal that the West is closely watching the situation and is prepared to consider even the most drastic measures to ensure Ukraine's sovereignty and independence. So, here we are, in a world where the idea of NATO troops fighting in Ukraine is not just a theoretical concept, but a proposal put forth by a major world leader. It's a proposal that has sparked debate, raised eyebrows, and provoked thought. And while the likelihood of it materializing may be slim, its impact is already being felt. While the proposal was warmly welcomed in Kiev, it was viewed more as a signal to the Kremlin rather than a realistic military strategy. This is where we stand today, in a world of complex geopolitics and ever-evolving strategies, where every proposal, every statement, and every action can have far-reaching implications. How did the Kremlin respond to this proposal? Let's delve into that. The Kremlin's response to Macron's proposal was swift and unequivocal. The suggestion of NATO troops fighting alongside Ukrainian forces was met with a clear-cut warning. If NATO troops were to engage in direct combat with Russian forces, it could potentially escalate into a wider conflict with the West. The Kremlin's message was stark. It was a clear signal to NATO and the international community that Russia is prepared to defend its interests and will not shy away from a broader confrontation if provoked. The implications of this warning are far-reaching and could have a profound effect on the global political landscape. Consider this scenario. If NATO were to heed Macron's proposal and deploy combat troops to Ukraine, it could potentially spark a direct military clash with Russian forces. This is a situation that the world has managed to avoid since the end of the Cold War, and it holds the potential for a significant escalation in the conflict. It could also lead to a breakdown of the already strained relations between Russia and the West, plunging us into a new era of geopolitical tension and uncertainty. Moreover, the Kremlin's warning also underlines the delicate balance of power that exists in the international arena. It serves as a reminder that any move by NATO to change the status quo could have far-reaching consequences not just for Ukraine and Russia, but for the entire world. The Kremlin's response also highlights the high stakes involved in this conflict. The situation in Ukraine is not just a local issue, it's a global concern that has the potential to reshape the international order. Every move, every decision, and every proposal is scrutinized and can have ripple effects that extend far beyond the borders of Ukraine. So, what does this mean for the future? It's hard to say for certain. What we do know is that the Kremlin's response has added another layer of complexity to an already intricate situation. It's a stark reminder of the delicate dance of diplomacy and power that plays out on the world stage. Clearly the stakes are high and the consequences could be dire. So where does NATO stand amidst all this? It's time to uncover the truth. In the face of the escalating conflict in Ukraine, NATO is treading carefully. Despite the French president's proposal to potentially deploy Western troops to fight alongside Ukrainian forces, this suggestion was met with skepticism from NATO leaders. They were quick to clarify that there are currently no plans to send combat troops into Ukraine. Why did they reject the proposal, you may ask? For starters, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is an intergovernmental military alliance. Its primary purpose is to safeguard the freedom and security of its member nations through political and military means. But there are boundaries, 
NATO is committed to the peaceful resolution of disputes. Its leaders are wary of any actions that could potentially escalate tensions or lead to a wider conflict. In this case, the risk of inflaming the situation is simply too high. The Kremlin has warned that the direct involvement of NATO troops in the conflict could lead to a broader clash with the West. This is a scenario that NATO leaders are keen to avoid, not to mention the strategic implications. NATO operates on the principle of collective defense. This means that an attack on one member is considered an attack on all. If NATO troops were to engage directly with Russian forces, it could trigger a response that would involve all NATO member nations. However, this doesn't mean NATO is turning a blind eye to the situation. The alliance is providing significant support to Ukraine. This includes political backing, military training and advice, as well as substantial financial aid. NATO is keen to help Ukraine build its defensive capabilities and resilience against the ongoing Russian aggression. In the face of such a complex situation, NATO leaders are walking a tightrope, balancing the need to support Ukraine and avoid further conflict. What about the United States and Europe? They've made their moves and the game continues. Now let's dive into the substantial support provided by the United States. It's no secret that the US has long been a strong ally of Ukraine, and this conflict is no exception. The United States has extended its hand in the form of military, financial, and humanitarian assistance. From state-of-the-art weaponry, to financial backing aimed at stabilizing Ukraine's economy, and not to forget the humanitarian aid for the countless innocent civilians caught in the crossfire, the US has been there, standing shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine. But what about Europe? Europe too has not stood idle. European leaders have pledged significant economic aid. This support is not just about numbers on a check, it's about helping Ukraine rebuild its economy, stabilize its financial systems, and ensure that ordinary Ukrainians can still have a future amidst the chaos. However, it's important to remember that aid is not just about money. It's also about solidarity, about standing together in the face of aggression, about sending a clear message that such actions cannot and will not be tolerated. And in this regard, both the US and Europe have made their stances clear. But, as we all know, the road to peace is often a long and winding one. The U.S. aid package for Ukraine has hit a bit of a speed bump, stalling in its journey to fruition. But this is not the end of the story, far from it. Even as we speak, efforts to get it back on track are underway, and so, the game of international diplomacy continues. Each move, each decision, carries with it the weight of millions of lives. But one thing remains constant. The international community's unwavering support for Ukraine. Despite the stalled U.S. aid package for Ukraine, the international community continues to rally behind Ukraine in its time of need. As we approach the end, let's take a look at the current situation and what the future might hold. At this juncture, the scenario is a complex tapestry of diplomatic maneuvers and military stratagems. The proposal by French President Macron, suggesting Western troops should fight alongside Ukrainian forces, was met with both skepticism and clarification from NATO leaders. They've stated unequivocally that there are no plans for combat troops in Ukraine. However, the Kremlin has been quick to respond, warning of a wider conflict with the West if NATO troops were to engage in direct combat with Russian forces. But what does this mean for the future? The situation is volatile to say the least, and predicting what happens next is akin to forecasting the path of a storm. Every decision, every action, could potentially escalate or diffuse the situation. There's no denying that Macron's proposal, despite its reception, has sparked conversations. It was welcomed in Kyiv and regardless of its feasibility as a military strategy, it sent a clear signal to the Kremlin. The question now is how this signal will be interpreted and what the response will be. And what about the rest of the world? The United States and European leaders have rallied around Ukraine, offering substantial military, financial and humanitarian assistance. Their commitment to supporting Ukraine in this crisis is evident and they've shown that they're prepared to stand up against aggression. But the crux of the matter still lies in the balance of power and the decisions of key players, particularly NATO and the Kremlin. What we're witnessing is a geopolitical chess game, and the next move could significantly alter the course of the conflict. As we continue to watch the situation unfold, one thing is clear. The world is watching, waiting, and hoping for a peaceful resolution. 